Imagining the seventh dimension. A point represents a position within a system, and as we add dimensions, the system becomes more complex. In the Imagining the Tenth Dimension animation, we're asked to think of our universe with its locked-in fine structure constant as a point at a position within the system of the seventh dimension, which means some other seven-dimensional point would be a way to get to some other universe with different basic physical laws than our own. Just how out there is this idea? Some string theorists have said that there are 10 to the power of 500 other universes out there, in something we can call the string theory landscape. Other cosmologists have suggested that the number of other possible universes out there approaches infinity, and that we are just in a tiny sliver of something called the multiverse. Either way, what we're trying to visualize here is a position within that landscape, and within that position we would find a way to get to Everett's universal wave function representing all possible outcomes for our particular universe. Here's a graphic which was part of a great article published in November 2007's Scientific American, written by Cliff Burgess and Fernando Quevedo. The article is called The Great Cosmic Roller Coaster Ride. The text that accompanied this graphic said this, According to string theory, our observable universe is a small part of a larger space having more dimensions than the three we directly see. The other dimensions may be microscopic in size or otherwise difficult to penetrate and crumpled up in a funky shape known as a kalabi yao space. The observable universe may be on a membrane, or simply a brain, sitting at the tip of a spike, what physicists call a throat, or composing part of a membrane wrapped around teacup-like handles. As you can see in this graphic, these scientists propose that our universe is constrained by brains or membranes in the third dimension and the seventh dimension. When I published my book in 2006, did I know that string theory proposes this? I did not. Still, there seems to be another very interesting parallel here between my proposal that our universe is locked in at a position within the seventh dimension and the string theory idea that our universe is constrained by a seven-dimensional brain. My goal since the day I launched this project has been to continue to document interesting connections between leading edge science and my approach to visualizing the dimensions, and I believe we're looking at a particularly useful one here. The word multiverse has a number of different meanings for different people, so there are some possibilities for confusion. As you'll see in the Wikipedia article on this topic, physicist Max Tegmark has proposed that there are four different levels of multiverse. Let's talk about each of these levels beginning with level 1. Remember the cosmological horizon? It gives us a way of seeing that each of us is at the center of our own version of the observable universe, and that if we were on a planet billions of light years from here, we would still see ourselves to be at the very center of a different but essentially similar cosmological horizon. Those two would overlap much like a space-time Venn diagram. But what if an observer were so far away that their cosmological horizon didn't overlap with ours at all? In a level 1 multiverse, space-time is perfectly flat. On that flat sheet of space-time, there are an infinite number of self-contained universes, all with the same physical laws and constants. Almost all will differ from our own universe. However, because there are infinitely many, there will eventually be similar and even identical configurations. Even though this version of the multiverse has many supporters, particularly since it doesn't require the existence of any extra dimensions, I have to say that this one feels extremely unlikely to me. Max Tegmark estimates that within a level 1 multiverse, an identical volume to ours should be about 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 115 meters away from us. If a universe identical to ours is that far away, then how far away is the universe where I got up five minutes earlier this morning? And how far away from that one is the one where I got up four minutes and 59 seconds earlier? I would say it's easy to see why some people who are taught this version of the multiverse dismiss it as being ridiculously extravagant. With my project, I propose that the cosmological horizon is the space-time equivalent of the 3D horizon we see around us when we're in the middle of the ocean. It's the same in every direction because of an underlying curvature. 
Topologically speaking, if we think of our 4D space-time as a flat plane, or the surface of the ocean as a flat plane, where is the curvature? In either case, I would say it's in the next dimension up. So our observable 4D universe is really on the surface of a 5D hypersphere, which means that if Tegmark's calculation is correct, we have a measurement of the circumference of that hypersphere. Just as we could travel east on the surface of the Earth and eventually end up back where we started, this would indicate that if we traveled 10 to the power of 10 to the power of 115 meters, we would traverse the surface of the 5D hypersphere and end up at the same place we are right now. It also means that if I had adjusted my angle ever so slightly, I could have ended up in the universe that is really nearby ours in the fifth dimension, where I got up five minutes earlier this morning. But to be clear, my interpretation invokes extra dimensions, while the level one multiverse Tegmark is describing does not. Let's look at level two. This is universes with different physical constants. In this version, the multiverse as a whole is stretching and will continue doing so forever. But some regions of space stop stretching and form distinct bubbles, like gas pockets in a loaf of rising bread. Such bubbles are embryonic level one multiverses. With my project, I have referred to this as the multiverse landscape and placed it in the seventh dimension and above, depending upon the context of the discussion. But within Tegmark's classification system, his level two multiverse, like the level one, does not require the existence of extra dimensions and is still on an infinitely flat expanse of space-time. Here's level three, the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. Hugh Everett III's theory of the universal wave function, commonly known as the many worlds interpretation, tells us that observation causes one universe out of many to be selected, but the others continue on, just as real as the one we're in. Tegmark argues that a level 3 multiverse does not contain more possibilities than a level 1 or 2 multiverse. In effect, all the different worlds created by splits in a level 3 multiverse with the same physical constants can be found in some Hubble volume in a level 1 multiverse. Tegmark writes that the only difference between level 1 and level 3 is where your doppelgangers reside. In level 1, they live elsewhere in good old three-dimensional space. In level 3, they live on another quantum branch in infinite dimensional Hilbert space. Similarly, all level 2 bubble universes with different physical constants can in effect be found as worlds created by splits at the moment of spontaneous symmetry breaking in a level 3 multiverse. Okay, at last we get to extra dimensions, even if they're infinite within Tegmark's classification system. With my project, I've suggested that these other universes resulting from different physical constants are at different positions within the multiverse landscape of the 7th and 8th dimension, and that having arrived at any particular location within that landscape, there is a potential for there to be a wave function of possible states, in other words, a set of parallel universes for the resulting universe within the first through sixth dimension. Now let's look at level four. This is the ultimate ensemble hypothesis of Tegmark himself. This level considers equally real all universes that can be described by different mathematical structures. Tegmark argues that this implies that any conceivable parallel universe theory can be described at level four and subsumes all other ensembles therefore bringing closure to the hierarchy of multiverses, and there cannot be, say, a level 5. Ultimate Ensemble certainly works as a description of the 10th dimension within my approach to visualizing the dimensions, and I've been saying that to avoid confusion, it's better not to call this overarching concept a multiverse, but rather the omniverse. This helps to keep it separate in our minds from the parallel universes of our own universe, which is Tegmark's level one, which I've also referred to as our universe's phase space, and the multiverse landscape of possible universes, Tegmark's level two and or three. On top of that, I have added the ninth dimension, which encompasses the dimensions below, but moves beyond any physical expressions and into patterns of information only. And by then we are arriving at what Tegmark calls level four. The omniverse then becomes either the ninth dimension in its entirety or the tenth dimension in its unobserved state, a single point representing the ultimate ensemble of all possible patterns and shapes, ready to be created through symmetry breaking to spill us back into the realities of the dimensions below. So what is unique about the seventh dimension? 
Our universe never wanders off into the other different initial conditions universes as we observe the quantum wave function of possible outcomes for our universe because it is constrained by its position, or a D7 brain as we saw in the string theory graphic we looked at previously, within the seventh dimension. Moving to another position within the seventh dimension and above precipitates a completely different universe with different basic physical laws. And for that universe, its expressions in the lower dimensions will be just as real as our own and just as locked in by their position within the seventh dimension and above as our own universe is. As I have cautioned people from the outset of this project, my new way of thinking about time and space is not the explanation for string theory, it's just an innovative way to visualize 10 spatial dimensions, something that most people would have said was impossible to do. I've always remarked though that I find it interesting to see how many different spiritual and metaphysical systems have also placed a heavy significance on the number 7. So much so that one of the 26 songs I've attached to this project is called Seven Levels. Here's a link to one of the videos for that song. Let me close with this thought. If information equals reality, then absolutely everything about our reality can be thought of as patterns and shapes within the information that is the fabric of quantum indeterminacy, or Tegmark's ultimate ensemble, subatomic particles, fractals, life, consciousness, and our observed universe are all structures that result from these underlying patterns that reside in that place where the distinction between past, present, and future is meaningless. Our own observed reality is being created at the fifth dimension, so anything beyond that becomes a part of the you-can't-get-there-from-here list, unless we can someday navigate within those extra dimensions beyond the fifth. And as we get closer to ten, we are now starting to move away from the reality side of the equation and more towards the information side. We'll continue this exploration next time with Imagining the Eighth Dimension.